Well, hey there, eighth graders. Uh, yesterday, you guys should have completed your Wait on Other Worlds um, on today's Teams posts. Uh, today, you guys will talk really quick about mass and weight. So first of all, you guys should have your Teams and your OneNote open, and you guys should have created a new section in your OneNote. So this new section, if you guys click down here and write Add Section, is titled Gravity. Okay, and we're going to have two pages in this. The first one is going to be mass versus weight, and the second one's going to be gravity. Today, we're going to worry about the mass versus weight page. So you guys would click add page twice and then retitle them right here, mass versus weight and gravity. And on Teams today, you guys should have this picture to add that explains mass and weight. You guys will need this, obviously, for the quiz. This will be something that you guys can use on the quiz um, when we're done talking about gravity. So just to go over this really briefly, uh, yesterday we talked about mass versus weight and looked at how our mass wouldn't change on other planets, but because of the different gravitational forces on other planets, our weight would change. So just to sum up, mass is the amount of matter in an object, so how many atoms and molecules make up an object. Uh, think of matter as atoms and molecules, so the amount of matter does not change with gravity, so it doesn't matter where you are in the universe, you have the same amount of things that build your body or your object. Okay, versus weight is the amount of force on an object due to gravity. So if we go to other planets, we're gonna experience different gravitational forces, okay? So we will therefore have different weights. So to calculate weight, we take the mass times the gravity. It's measured in Newtons or pounds in America. And the weight changes with gravity. So if we're on a planet that has less gravity, we're gonna weigh less, okay? If we're on a planet that has more gravity, we're gonna weigh more. So that basically sums up everything we went through yesterday. Um, today though, you guys are gonna do a different activity looking at the amount of gravity that planets experience. So we're kind of shifting our focus off of weight and mass and focusing just on gravity. And we're gonna to start to look at uh, what different things affect the amount of gravity. So you guys might kind of already have a clue from our assignment yesterday. But if we're looking at a planet, how can we kind of predict what its gravity may or may not look like? All right, so you have this link here. It's also on your team's post and in your assignments. Uh, so you'll open this link and you will have this FET simulation. If you guys go ahead and click play on that. And then we'll just follow the directions. I'm gonna go through a couple for you and just kind of get you guys through the first couple of questions and then the gist of the worksheet, and then you guys will have time to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and select model, and then on the right-hand toolbox, I'm gonna to check all four boxes. So you're gonna be needing to check all four blocks here. No matter how many times you guys are resetting this, you're gonna to need to have those four blocks checked. Okay, so play button's right there. I'm, not, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play, and you guys can kind of observe. So this is a little key to tell you guys, all right, the blue arrow shows gravitational force, okay? So remember that this is a force just like what we learned about last unit with force and motion. So if we look at this, we see a direction of the force and we can see how they're acting on each other. The great thing about this is these arrows also demonstrate Newton's third law that basically says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, or in this case, the better way to define it is when the force of Earth, uh, the gravitational force of, force of Earth puts a force on the sun, the sun puts the same force back on the earth, but in a different direction. So notice how those two arrows are the same size. Does that mean that earth and sun have the same gravitational force? Absolutely not, but this is Newton's third law in motion, or in action right there. All right, so what does the red arrow represent then? So if you guys look right here, the red arrow represents what? Okay, hint, look at my mouse. Okay, if gravity did not exist, what would the red arrow tell you? So, great thing about this is you guys can turn gravity off and see what would happen. So I'll give it just a second longer. One thing about this, you guys can also change the speed of your orbit. So if I were to turn gravity off, what does the red arrow tell us? Okay, um, as the planet is still moving, so I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna mark all these boxes again. And as the planet is still moving, I'm gonna go fast forward because it's a little bit easier to see everything that happens. Oh, shoot, sorry. I'm gonna go fast forward and I'm gonna hit play. So as the planet is still moving, change either the planet's mass, the star's mass, or both. Highlight what you changed. So you guys can see these 
two slider bars right here can change the star's mass, which is our sun, to either a smaller mass or a larger mass, or it could change the planet's mass to either a smaller mass or a larger mass. So you're gonna choose what change you want to make, okay? And then you'll highlight over here. So maybe I go ahead and increase my star's mass, okay? So I'm gonna go star's mass was greater. Okay, so I changed my star's mass, so that's the only thing I'm gonna highlight, and I made it bigger. So then again, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna highlight that. So here's my highlighter, and I would go ahead and highlight that, okay? Uh, what happened to the orbit? Then you're gonna explain what you guys saw happen there, okay? All right, and you guys don't have to make that change. You guys can definitely make your own change. So go ahead and reset this, check my four boxes again for the next test, and I can hit play. And then you guys are gonna do the same thing. So basically you're just gonna kind of mess around um, changing different things. So again, change either the star's mass, make it less or greater than what you did before. Um, planet mass, less or greater. So choose something you didn't do on the last one. Highlight what you did and then answer what happened, okay? Were you able to have the planet leave the orbit of the star? So I just showed you guys by turning the gravity off, but could you change the mass to show that planet leaving the orbit around the sun? Okay, so mess with the mass to see if you can get that done. And then were you able to have the planet crash into the star? You guys just saw that happen. Okay, which scenario you guys would highlight what I did to do that or what you guys did to do that. If you guys answered no to either of those, then go back and keep playing with your masses until you can achieve both of those things. So you can lose your planet from orbit or you guys can have it crash into the star. Okay, and then go ahead, reset, and you're going to add a moon. So we're gonna click right here to add a moon. It's gonna ask you guys what the moon's orbit looks like. So this is kind of one of those relative motion things like we talked about in class. If I'm dribbling a tennis ball across the front of the classroom, that motion of that tennis ball is gonna look different to me than it looks to you guys watching me do it, okay? So this is very similar to that where if we watch the moon from the planet or from Earth, our moon's just gonna kind of go around us, okay? It's kind of making a circle. But if we were to watch that, from further back in outer space, it would kind of be making this little flower shape. Okay, uh, click redo, add a moon, and then you guys can change again the mass of either the planet or the star. You guys can't change the mass of the moon though. Okay, so answer that. Uh, what happened to the moon and the planet's orbit? So make sure you guys address the moon's orbit there. Okay, and then uh, you're kind of, you guys kind of get a mess up formatting there, okay? Uh, play with these two selected so you guys can see the picture of just the moon and the earth or you guys can do the moon and the saddle or excuse me the earth and a satellite so let's go ahead and take a look at this all right if you guys go fast forward you guys can see these changes a lot quicker okay what else you guys can derive from this is how long it takes to orbit um, obviously you guys can mess with these you can mess with these you can mess with the gravity and you can mess with the speed it takes to go around. That just basically fast forward. It doesn't actually change the number of days. Um, and then, yeah, all right. So what happened to the amount of gravity as the planetary object's masses increased? So <laughs> if we're looking, uh, okay, let's go back to M. Play with these two selected. What happened pretty quickly in each sim compared to the previous? So previously we were looking at the rotation of the Earth around the sun. How is this different? What changed? What happened quicker? Okay, so think about that. Think about what a satellite looks like and what is happening quicker there, okay? Um, also notice that the size of that force is a little bit different, okay? And let's change the amount of gravity so you guys can look at those two. Those are fairly easy to figure out. The last thing I wanna show you guys is if I just change a little bit of my planet. Let's do this. So I'm gonna make both my star, ooh, too much. I'm gonna make both my sun and, or my earth rotate my sun, and I'm gonna just change a little part of my planet's mass here. Notice how these arrows increase in size. So this kind of changed and made an almost an elliptical, like egg-shaped orbit. Okay, so it's not gonna come back to the same spot as it had before. So you guys see it's not making a perfect circle. If I speed this up, you guys will be able to see that. Can tweak my earth just a little bit more. 
And you guys will see it still becomes less of a circle. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm kind of trying to achieve right there. Oh, too much. So what you guys can see is as those arrows rotate in this planet rotates around the sun. As it's further away, notice how there's less gravitational force. Those arrows are pretty small. But now watch as it gets closer, okay? What happens to those arrows? Okay, as they get closer, you see that that force gets bigger. But notice how those two arrows are always the same size. Okay, again, I just want to reiterate at this point that even though we don't have a collision between these two, we still have a force that's occurring between these two. So again, last unit, we talked about force and motion mainly with collisions. If we have one object colliding with another, okay, that first object puts a force on the second object, and the second object puts a force back on the first object. That's equal and opposite. But in this case, even though we don't have the Earth and the Sun touching, we still see this same thing where gravity is a force, and it's acting. So the Sun is putting a force on the Earth, and the Earth is putting a force back on the Sun. Every time those arrows grow or shrink, notice that they grow or shrink according to the other arrow. Those arrows are always the same size because no matter how big the Earth is or how big the Sun is, in comparison, they always put the same force on each other but in an equal or an opposite direction. So equal force, opposite direction. So if you guys have any questions on how to finish this assignment up, just let me know. Sorry that took me so long to get the correct thing I wanted to show you there. Um, but yeah, good luck and let me know if you have questions.